So I would like to ask to come on stage Andreas Schneider from the Global Textile Scheme. He is an expert, he's the export of data exchange and standards in the textile industry. Nadine Herbrich from Recycle Hero, a social impact startup from Hamburg, and Sarah Prien, a circular fashion designer, CEO of House of All, while well, we have here fans in the room, and member of Fab City Hamburg. And the panel will be moderated by the facilitator of the workshop, Michael Ziel. Thank you very much for all of them to join us. Okay, hi everybody. Thank you all for the nice introduction. Um, yeah, as you already mentioned, um, the four of us, we um, already met yesterday on the CDDD uh, workshop, and the idea of this panel now is to elaborate a little bit more in depth about the results of the workshop and maybe to share um, some different perspectives on the topic in a, in a more wider sense. And uh, starting with this, I um, would like to um, ask all the three of you, what are your contributions, professional contributions, to um, fostering a circular economy in the textile sector? And maybe um, don't all, all of you answer at the same time, but one after another, and maybe give us the short version, because we know that um, you're very much um, uh, involved and active in this field, so yeah, just uh, some brief insights. Um, Sarah, would you like to start? Sure. Um, well, House of All, I actually um, founded with the goal to make uh, circular clothing accessible and affordable for all and uh, get people to participate in the design process. So I think that's my contribution to um, to apply cosmolocal production with clothing, open source, um, and commons-based uh, model. So, in a nutshell. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Nadine, would you like to continue? Hi, um, my, name is, my name is Nadine from uh, Recycle Hero, and uh, Recycle Hero is, a, first of all, a pickup service for recyclable waste. Not recyclable waste, there is the mistake. It's recyclables that we have to bring back to the cycle. We are offering our services for B2B and B2C uh, customers here in Hamburg. And um, we also um, have textiles on our, um, in our pickup service. We implemented this almost two years ago. Why did we do this? We, um, we recognized that, that there is a big issue from how do we bring, like, private persons um, uh, um, they bring their textiles back to the circle, not everybody is able to sell it. So we said, okay, we offer them a, a cost-free service to bring it back to the, uh, to the textile cycle. Um, and we, uh, with Recycle Hero, sell it to local second-hand shops to close those loops, not all over the world, but uh, most locally here in Hamburg. And this is what we, um, what we do. And um, yeah, I, I think we can talk about this later, if you like. <laughs> Okay, thank you. And um, your activities, they are um, more or less um, central in, uh, in Hamburg. So um, you're um, representing local initiatives or companies. And um, Andreas, you're coming from Düsseldorf and you're also involved in an EU project. Maybe you also um, talk a little bit about this because um, as the senator pointed out, um, how important this is also to, um, to foster circular economy. My name is Andreas Schneider. I'm from Düsseldorf, which I learned yesterday is outside of Hamburg. Um, so I'm local <laughs> in this sense. Um, I founded three years ago, coming from a, my previous work, um, an industry initiative because we saw that we need a new data exchange standard for product data. That sounds totally boring. Um, but um, I'm a women's tailor and textile engineer, so I'm not an IT person and I'm not a sustainability expert. I learned a lot the last three years, but um, this work, we started as an efficiency initiative because we have gigantic manual work involved in our value chains. And 
I coincidentally became the, um, together with GS1 Holland, um, the sector chair in the so-called SURPASS project, which is the key sort of supporting project for the environmental uh, directive that is coming, um, which obviously goes around other um, facets. Um, so what is my, I can strongly recommend, by the way, the SURPASS has a recording on YouTube, which is free, where the colleague of Neil is explaining what sort of the background of the whole thing is, <clears throat> because it's not about carbon footprint or water consumption, it's about changing the business models, because today, majorly all business models being successful, the success comes with higher resources, and they want to decouple that, which I found a total interesting idea, and it's pretty obvious that this is not possible without data. To come back to the workshop yesterday, I'm very happy that they showed um, the circle and the, the yellow patches where the information needed, and the lines were showing who needs what information from whom. And I think it's pretty self-exclaiming, and Michael was getting paler and paler when the more he put on the floor yesterday. Uh, yes, it is complicated, and the question was, what can I contribute? We developed a standard that is a B2B data exchange standard um, that allows the automatic exchange along the whole value chain from Zamak and cotton and aluminum to feedstock. So this is... It's a, it's a piece in the puzzle that you don't see, or only experts see when they come to that point, but it's pretty important and I'm proud to be part of the game. Yeah, thank you, and you're absolutely right. I was a little bit in sorrow if we have enough tape to um, make all these connections between the, 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 the many um, different actors involved in the textile um, circle. Absolutely right. Um, and it became very clear that um, collecting data and distributing data, data, even on a local level among these many actors, is a very complex thing. And it's not easy to be organized. Um, but um, besides of that, um, I would like uh, to ask you what, are you what are your key takeaways, maybe learnings, insights from the workshop yesterday? Or Let's frame it in another way. Um, are there any? Um, or did you know all that in beforehand? Maybe, Sarah, mm -hmm. I would like to start with you because you're, you've also been involved in the organization of the workshop um, to make this transparent. And yeah, did you take away anything? Yes, indeed, um, because I remember uh, us talking beforehand and I said, well, it's uh, we all know these things like that's not uh, that's not something we need to kind of come together for there's there's more and uh, it turned out that it was actually really important to come together and there was answers coming out that i didn't expect so it was a very rich experience um and it was amazing to see how collaborative all these people were also because uh, I've been trying to um, bring people in uh, of the industry in Hamburg together and collaborate 10 years ago and it was very hard at that time and now something seems to have shifted and I really like to see that and um, I like that everybody um, agreed to continue working together and perhaps have a round table. What I forgot to say is that actually I also uh, have an open lab for circular textiles with House of All, so that would be probably a good space to kind of continue um, working on that. And the second thing is that um, still um, locality is very important and also uh, bridging the the hardware software gap and um, establishing some sort of data literacy on the local level with the people that are working with textiles. Right. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this was this was something from yesterday that um, several people pointed out the importance of locality or the, the potential that um, that um, locality um, bears for establishing economical circles, also in the, in, in the sector of um, the textile industry. Um, Nadine, anything from you? Key insights? Anything to add? Yeah, I mean, we, 
we, we talked a lot about those different perspectives and for me it's always shocking to see how big the complexity actually is that we are facing and how much there is to do and how much we have to structure and to digitalize. But uh, there is hope uh, and this is also something uh, I've seen yesterday. There are really motivated people who try to uh, really bring those things forward. The complexity and the standardization are the two things that I took out that that, that we have to really uh, focus on. But um, also I want to, um, to mention that I, I saw, saw those points that the start and the end of a product are the most important things. Like if we put everything into cradle to cradle, for example, from right at the beginning, and if we also uh, bring it out to the people, which is also as the educational part to bring it out to the people, it's not good if only the bubble our bubble is talking about it, we really need to narrow it down to everybody and make it understandable. Um, this is the, this, this was, came out pretty clear yesterday. And also um, the other thing is um, the, how do we, if we have all those used clothing, um, how do we structure, structure it and, and, and make it visible to make this whole second hand thing and reuse thing um, much more attractive than it is right now, because this needs to be, this needs to, the 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 pre-sale uh, needs to be the new, the new number one. Uh, we cannot, actually, all H and M's and how they how they name it, they they should close uh, soon, <laughs> or should completely went to or go to uh, to second hand, because there is so much, so much uh, in this world already. We. Yeah, so sorry, but I have to say this very clear. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you for the for the open words. Um, Andreas, of course, you're next. Um, your key takeaways and maybe one additional question from my side. Um, as you are dealing a lot with this uh, question of um, how to collect and provide data, um, what makes it so complex? Why is it so complex to foster circular economy with the help of um, providing data. The Germans here in the room know the slogan Geiz ist geil. <laughs> so we are an international industry with very short life cycles and very international value chains. And um, if you are a sustainable fashion producer today, you get penalized. So you have more efforts, you have to put more money in materials, processes, and so on. And um, that makes it so complicated. The second thing, I think we have, a, we need, and we are in the process of getting, and that's a positive news, a mind shift in the industry. I'm 62 now, I'm the life oldest, I hold the record um, startup in Dusseldorf at the moment. And I see with many colleagues and C-level managers that sustainability has reached their home. Um, the seller of my condominium says he has two daughters and they kick his pants every day. He is the managing director, the one managing director of the biggest construction firm in Düsseldorf. And he said his daughters say, you get sustainable or we kill you. <laughs> so this is in the center of the here. So there's as good news as, as it is. But I mean, in an industry where cheating is national sport. So if you buy cheaper and if you buy, pinch the penny here and there, this is not an environment for collaboration and without collaboration, no standards. Um, I must be also so positive or, or sort of critical, the GS1 world with identify, capture, share is, is very finished product oriented and now suddenly we're talking in end-to-end -end value chains and even myself, I have problems, I catch myself that I don't think circular. It's a process in the, in the brain. And so there's a lack of standards. Um, I, as I said, I started as an as a efficiency initiative and i be so honest, I'm not the brightest tart on the IT or candle on the IT tart, so I'm not, <laughs> not an IT person, but we see the necessity and to all the Germans in the room, also very critical, we're thinking in all or nothing. Um, this will be a gradual process. We have to en embrace the problem and see every small thing counts and then things will move. And the, the last thing, the biggest challenge is that the IT companies, um, this is part of my work to convince them to, to step into a think in standards, 
didn't do a thing. Um, I mean, to give you a, a, a praxis example, a textile sorter needs a data set on the product, on a article color size level that says the layers, the 90% cotton, 10% elastan, that's the classical one you find on your care label, and then you need to know, is it virgin, is it pre-consumer recycled or post-consumer recycled? It's no rocket science, it's not IT. This is what you need, otherwise you can't work, beside a few other data. Not one, I said that yesterday, not one IT system in the world is capable of processing this data set at the moment. So we don't have to talk like, you know, fairy tales and there's a lot of problem decision descriptions, there's a lot what we should do, but when it comes what Neil said, um, you know, data is the key to the whole thing and there will be no data without automatic data exchange. And my learning yesterday was um, to don't lose the small and smallest player in the market out of sight. I'm anyway the advocate also in Brussels for the small companies because many of my members in my previous work with the fashion association were very small, but not this micro <laughs> people here. And, and so we know we are creative industry. We don't make screws. Yeah, so we have to keep this thing and this was my learning yesterday. Okay, thank you. Yeah, indeed, we, as a, we didn't talk so much about, uh, about mindsets, but it's very obvious, as you um, highlighted, that we need also sustainable mind shifts to establish a circular economy, a sustainable um, system. Um, but we talked a lot about um, problems on the practical level, like who can provide a data that is requested by one actor, how, Sarah, you pointed that out, how to physically connect the data with a particular product or not even with the product, with the material the product is um, made out and so on. So there are really a lot of practical questions that, um, that have to be solved. And um, this brings me to my, um, to my last question to the three of you. Um, do you see concrete potential or um, yeah, solutions how to, um, yeah, how to do the next step in this process? What, can, what should be done um, as a next step to um, implement circular economy in the textile industry? Maybe also on a local level, for example, here in Hamburg, including Dusseldorf. Um, Sarah, would you like to start on that? Uh, yes, sure. Um, well, I'm actually in the process, or we are in the process of taking next steps by uh, um, being part of the DTEC project, um, where we um, work, well, evaluate the, the capacity of uh, local production um, first in the AP1, and then also um, uh, research or look for materials, how local can we actually source anything, which is, uh, as many people will know, uh, very tricky because uh, we are cotton users and um, we, we decided at one point, uh, to not very long ago, to actually enslave the other side of the planet. We will not see it, so let's just get them to work for us. And uh, sorry, I can't, I'm not going to dive deep because it's actually to shed tears on it. But, um, so this is the project and the next step that um, actually I've got the head on for is um, piloting um, a local distributed um, fabrication uh, process and uh, working together with the local um, trade union, I think Handwerkskammer. <laughs> Um, and uh, trying to standardize, standardize uh, processes and look what the challenges are when attaching a code or like a UID to a piece of clothing and also uh, working with the uh, um, tailors who, uh, you know, they write uh, their, their bills, uh, their invoices, sorry, uh, they write by hand. So teach them data is important and tell them to um, kind of implement a process where they must not forget to sew in a tag somewhere um, and also to use yarn that is non-polyester. I've 
given them the cotton one that I sourced uh, in a long process and um, it didn't work for their machine so they just uh, decided to you know use the polyester because it works better and these are the challenges that uh, are on a local level very visible um, and not so visible on a big uh, global level with the mass production but if we want to kind of you know, go for a Fab City concept, then we need the local um, production and, you know, try to uh, use the resources, the capacities that we've got here because we've got one tailor next to the other in every uh, road. Like, there is many of them and they good, good uh, handwerker, good uh, craftsmen. craftsmen, yeah, and... Uh, a lot of times uh, it's just because we, ca we cannot afford, you know, uh, sustainability is a luxury. So trying to um, implement processes and uh, distributed fabrication in Hamburg is my goal and our goal with the Fab City, um, which is, you know, 2054, we probably need the time, but <laughs> if, um, if at all, but I keep uh, envisioning it and trying to work for it and... Yeah, so. Okay, yeah, wonderful, thank you. Um, Nadine, from your perspective, next steps? Yeah, I think it's very important to bring together all stakeholders as Fab City do, does, and not for one time, but really remaining uh, and, 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 and regularly to really build an exchange here. And I think it's a very iterati iterative uh, process. So you cannot only come from one direction, you actually need to start a bit more high level. I was actually thinking about building, <laughs> it's a bit too visionary maybe, but building a platform where you bring together the demand, uh, the demand side and the um, supply side uh, for um, those recyclable textiles. Um, uh, obviously, we have to solve some other issues before. Uh, we potentially did, uh, did already, but to bring those sites together to and then put those those uh, platform um, most locally to bring together, like bring those people, the, the, the partners um, locally together to really um, get the, the biggest amount of uh, reusable uh, textiles out of it. So this is a, a kind of, I think, this is something I think very often about. Or oh, we with Recycle Hero, we have a really good insight uh, to this whole second tent um, topic due uh, due to our work, and um, we are actually thinking about those kind of stuff. Like how how can we increase uh, um, the efficiency um, of 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 um, every all information we have um, and bring make make it more transparent. <laughs> So yeah. maybe we should talk because there's an AP4 I didn't talk about that's uh, around recycling. <laughs> yeah, we Perfect. Yeah. Sure. Um, again, highlights the importance of cooperations and exchange. Um, Andreas, last but not least, um, from your side, what are the next steps? If I'm informed correctly, the surplus project, it's only for one year and it's going so to until end Until March soon. next year. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my best friends is, the f is Rudi Behrens, no secret, he is the former industry manager from GS1 for fashion, many years. And he said, you need to build the highways and then the cars will come. Um, when I started four years ago to found a global textile scheme initiative, people said, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> So, um, what my next steps is to encourage also here the audience to um, think global and act local come back to the highway. Um, my goal is within Surpass, I said that yesterday, I'm part of a six people team who are currently drafting the first data layers for this DPP. And um, my goal is to make the highway um, workable for um, trucks and for all kinds of cars and for bicycles, so that because I think we need this variety in our industry. And um, so, and I'm, to me, the DPP will be, in combination with the legislation, the highway. And so to orient there um, is important. In any concepts, if it's tracking or tracing, or it's logistic value chains, or picking up, the, the last mile is the, big, um, the biggest challenge. This is where local localarity comes in place. And so I think everybody can think, and I think that we will see a lot of innovation on that field by using the standards. 
The second part of the answer is I'm also I'm the work package leader um, in a CISU tech project. It's a Horizon 2020 EU project where I have the task to build on GTS um, a circular textile open standard. And I will do that in the next three years together with Rise in Sweden and a good consortium. And so this is my next step to sort of with approved by EU to get this going. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Um, thanks to all of you, so many things happening. This was just a very short insight, also just a very short insight into the workshop we had yesterday. And um, yeah, as we all agreed, we, we keep on working. Right on, right? Okay, um, so um, thanks a lot. And um, yeah, the stage is yours again, Wolf. <laughs> Enjoy the conference. Bye.